Hello, this is your instructor, Jeffrey Fox, talking about big data applications and analytics. And this is the motivation uh, videos, the slice slide sets. And uh, it's centered around the concepts of machine learning, big data, and the cloud are uh, three major thrusts which are revolutionizing and transforming uh, the economy today. And uh, this particular course has more an application focus. It's not, it's not trying to teach you the latest machine learning algorithm, nor is it trying to teach you how to use the latest uh, programming model on the cloud. But rather to demonstrate with, uh, by going over a set of um, examples of how big data is actually working and doing these revolutionary things. We start off by uh, giving a global overview. Uh, then we go into a particular application such as physics, uh, Internet of Things, health, remote sensing, and also a very general overview. And then we try to use those applications to sort of introduce algorithms and introduce the cloud. This course will also have a significant review of cloud, so though to do cloud, you should go to a cloud course. The projects part of this class will allow you to use clouds to do your work. This is lesson 1A and 1B, uh, in overview slide four. Uh, these cover um, hype curves, and there's actually a collection of uh, remarks accumulated over several years. It's been updated as to, as to uh, fall 2018 with the latest uh, results, especially from the famous Internet Trends publication and the Gartner uh, analyses of the emerging technologies. And this uh, lesson used to be one lesson, but now it's two lessons, 1A and 1B. And it will focus mainly on hype curves. So let's get going on that. Thank you. It's going. So this is, if you like, the summary of this um, full um, unit, which has some 140 slides. And so we have all this data being gathered. And those data involve people and machines. Machines talking to machines, people talking to machines, and vice versa. Smartphones, smart homes, intelligent vehicles. We have science with satellites and accelerators. And uh, particles and photons are interacting with each other. That's what, if you like, accelerators do. They look at uh, not people interacting with machines or what have you. They look at particles interacting with particles. Uh, we store this whole stuff in immense clouds. Uh, we hope to co-locate storage and computing, but that's not so easy. The computing on the data does analytics, which converts data to information, to knowledge, to wisdom. Uh, and then finally, after wisdom, we get either decisions or community consensus or not or, or, or um, insight. And then we have data mining, which emphasizes the fact that sometimes we just look totally in an unstructured fashion to see what the what the proverbial knowledge diamonds are there are in the data rough which is data mining. And so this is disruptive. And this disruptive transform transformation is driving economy and vice versa. And it's creating millions of jobs in the area of data science, which is the topic of this course. And we look at the um, revolutionist implications for research, education, etc. So here's some trends. Well, big data is the data deluge. Data is pouring now. We have whatever it is, 1.8 billion photos uploaded every day into the cloud from Facebook and whatever it is, or Snapchat or whatever it is. And um, we have uh, search. We have Amazon. We have Netflix. We have scientific applications like the Large Hadron Collider with 15 petabytes a year and so on. So that's the data deluge. We have things getting smaller, which is chips. And the reason why we can process more data is the chips are getting smaller. And therefore, in a given volume or for a given amount of money, we can put more chips and therefore process more. And then originally with chips, they got uh, faster and smaller. 
Now they just get smaller. So actually, uh, faster or smaller was three degrees of improvement because you have x and y of the uh, physical construction of the chip, and uh, t for the um, clock speed. Now the clock speed of the chips is, is more or less constant, but the feature size is continuing to decrease. So that gives you Moore's law, the continuing amount of computing. Because everything is getting smaller, we have to take a chip, which is whatever it is, a centimeter or so, uh, the type dimensions, and we can put more cores in there because the cores are getting smaller. So um, we don't really want chips which are tight, which are uh, millimeter by a millimeter. So we are making cores smaller. We're making lots of cores in the given chip, and. This is also driving, because we can get the same amount of computing in a smaller space, is driving these so-called lightweight clients, such as phones and tablets and sensors. And then in the back end, as well as all these tiny things lying around in the, on the front end, because that's what the multi-core uh, revolution is telling you, uh, we don't really need lots of parallel computing on clients. We can do some, but not enormous. So we tend to make clients smaller, but servers in the back end are fine because they can process lots and lots and lots of clients. And so servers use multi-core to process lots of clients. So in the trivialist model with your nifty new 18-core uh, Haswell chip, you can process 18 simultaneous things going on from clients on the internet. And all of this is helping uh, you lot because they're new jobs. With new curricula, which is mainly in universities, which never like to change, might have to change. They probably won't actually. And we need to look at clouds, or which is part of distributed systems, and therefore changes that course. And we have this somewhat new area called data science. Uh, so this summarizes this uh, small set of slides. Uh, we introduce the hype cycles with their phases. We go in particular to the emerging technologies, so of course, uh, with the latest so at the moment, 2017, but we put in 2016 as a contrast. We look both also at the more detailed priority matrices, which uh, quantify benefits and adoption time. And um, we also look at the related data center infrastructure hype cycle and priority matrix. And as we've said, clouds are actually gone through the hype cycle. They emerged and no longer appear because they're not emerging technologies. But some of their features like serverless and machine learning and blockchain are still on the cycle. So there's this tail, it's like a comet. The cloud comet is uh, roared through, it's matured, it's going forever. But the tail of new technologies is still emerging. Okay, here is a little picture with um, uh, the hype cycle with the uh, things we've already introduced, the uh, different parts, the innovation trigger, peak of inflated expectations, trough of disillusionment, and the slope and slash plateau. Um, it also tries to classify the classes of technologies and where they are. Uh, digital platforms like hyperscale computing is here. We're still far from um, far from the peak of, of, of expectations. AI everywhere is at the top here. Incredibly hyped. Immersive experiences, which are a rather different style of technology, not so relevant for this particular class. They've gone through that hype and they're hopefully going to come along the slope of enlightenment, although they haven't clearly made it in the commercial consumer market yet. All right, so this uh, slide here actually goes through and defines these uh, five areas innovation trigger, where something happens. A uh, professor makes a breakthrough, makes a press release, gets attention. Then a lot of things, a lot of those happen with lots of professors and lots of companies, and we get to this peak of inflated expectation. Over enthusiasm, unrealism, un un uh, slightly flaky at advertising, 
And as they say, the only people making money are conference organizers and magazine publishers. Aha, uh -huh. trough of disillusionment. So some technologies pop, reach the trough and they never are seen again. They become unfashionable. The problems with the technologies become clear. Everybody's interest wanes, and there's some um, in a year or so, it's, you never hear of the game. But you don't even know it went into the trough. It just disappears. Now, but some of those things whiz through the trough and get to the slope of enlightenment. That's what clouds did. That's what virtualization is doing. And uh, they go from being flaky hype things to really pretty solid, uh, very usable things. <coughs> And they're now entering a very so much, very solid uh, commercialization phase with lots of um, lots of um, products coming out. And then when they get to slightly boring and everything is solid, they're on the plateau of productivity. And <coughs> uh, as it says here, about 20% of the potential customers have actually adopted it. So clouds are past 20%. Um, they're nearing actually in a two or three years, they'll be at 50%. All right, here we go on the hype cycle for 2018. This is actually a pretty interesting hype cycle. And by the way, this is the one for emerging technologies. There are, I don't know, 50 to 100 hype cycles. And so, but this is the most famous, because you get all the exciting, very broad based uh, technologies here. And what's interesting about this year is that I think there are more changes than I've ever seen before. And they reflect, not that the world has changed dramatically, but some things have become, like cloud computing and big data, have become so successful that they've just broken up into lots of smaller areas. And it's these small areas we're now seeing. Um, there's also another broad base areas in the bio, bio uh, um, digital bio area. And uh, augmented reality and virtual reality are st still uh, look as though they're going to have big impact, although I don't think that's really true yet. So, what Gartner emphasizes this uh, this year is the five trends. These trends are democratized artificial intelligence. That just says, well, we've been talking AI for well not that many years, but at least three years, and. Now it is becoming so broadly available with wonderful libraries which you click on the web. And it's being applied uh, over all lots of different application areas from, uh, from e-commerce through uh, your search engine, through your self-driving car, that it is now for the people. And that's gonna get more and more um, um, evident. Another broad trend, which is actually I think a rather older trend, digi digi digital ecosystems, which says that everything has to be digital. And we wish to get rid of paper. I try to avoid paper. And um, even when the university sends me these things through the mail, I'm afraid I don't keep them. Sometimes I don't even open them. Anyway, everything is digitized and you, you have an organization, you need to have a digital strategy. And then you need to have a data science strategy as to how you um, look at that, the digital things. And then you need also a cloud computing strategy as to how you process these things. Well, the next uh, the, um, broad trend is do-it-yourself biohacking. Uh, highlighting um, things like, I don't know, 23andMe, the, a company that analyzes your genes and other many other emerging areas where there's some interface between the digital world and the biological world, and I'm trying to change the biological world. We have the um, immersive experiences, artificial intelligence and virtual reality, and we have a cloud which is just everywhere. It's the continuous cloud, as we once said many many years ago. It is truly continuous. And you can't avoid it, and you don't want to avoid it. And actually, if you go to the edge and you look at your self-driving car, it is partly the cloud in the car, partly the cloud back at the data center. So this is a cloud that goes from the 
center to the edge. So as Microsoft says, there's an intelligent cloud and an intelligent edge. They're seamlessly linked together. Sometimes people use the word fog to explain the fact that the cloud is actually extends to the ground. So we have a few remarks about these trends in uh, detail. And here's the democratized artificial intelligence. And most, like when you read Wall Street articles, they say the next big place money will be made is AI. And they recommend, um, and they're not quite certain what to recommend. I don't, apart from the obvious people who are using AI, like Facebook and Google, and Microsoft and Amazon, and so on. It's not quite clear what other what other major winners there will be, but there will be many winners in this area because AI is so important, so successful, because we finally got enough uh, computers and enough understanding of the algorithms to really apply it broadly. Um, and there's also open source is a key part of this because uh, this is allowing you to. As uh, Microsoft would say, share the global AI supercomputer. That the, super com the AI supercomputer, which is providing democratized AI, is global, and that means that all its APIs must be open and so on. Otherwise, you can't bring it into people's hands, because uh, if you have a um, particular application, you need to be able to access some open APIs to use the AI capability. APIs to use the AI capability. And um, there's a thing called AI Platform as a Service, which is basically the programming environment for AI. And all of this has to be trained. And at the bottom of these next five slides, it sort of lists the actual emerging technology topics that um, correspond to uh, this particular trend. And you can see there's both the software, AI platform as a service, the broad concept, artificial general intelligence, or global AI, driving, self-driving cars, robots, conversational interface, neural nets, flying vehicles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's democratize AI. And here we have um, digitalized ecosystem. And as I said, I think this has been always, this has been clearly important for the last 15 years. That uh, as we move to a cloud based environment away from a filing cabinet based environment, we need to not have folders with information in it. Uh, we need to have the directories or object stores rather with data in them. And um, it's that trend that has to be ubiquitous. And, and uh, I think this is clearly happening, it's relatively clear how to happen it. Uh, there's some interesting issues like blockchains and knowledge graphs and the Internet of Things, which are all part of this trend. Well, here we have do-it-yourself do it biohacking. That means that, um, as they say, we'll enter the transhuman era where we can hack biology and uh, we can make ourselves healthier, as well, I guess unhealthier. And um, there, this is possibly less well developed than some of the uh, other areas. And uh, there are a lot of um, ethical issues to be uh, addressed here. And um, say, we can go from diagnostics that we have obscure diseases are revealed by our genes to implants that would allow us to do things with remarkable capability. And of course, there is this, uh, actually something they've had for a while, the brain-computer interface, which is the ability to link the brain to the computer with greater capability. I remember I wrote a proposal to do that um, in the 1990s. It was turned down, unfortunately, but uh, we had some good ideas. This, this type of idea is a pretty old idea. All right, immersive experiences. And we need to basically merge computers and people in a seamless fashion. 
and um, there we have 4D printing. You thought 3D printing was in, was uh, the leading edge technology. There is connected homes, connected cars, connected cities. We have AI on the edge, like Alexa. Uh, Self-healing systems. Self-healing systems are pretty alarming because they basically say that our giant AI supercomputer is actually monitoring itself and adjusting things to make itself more and more powerful. And of course, one needs to worry that um, it will take over the world because it will realize that we're not so important. Anyway, maybe we are. We'll have to see. There are, of course, lots of science fiction stories about this. And those I used to read um, 55 years ago. So that, that's a pretty old idea. Ubiquitous infrastructure. So we're living in the world of the continuous cloud. And there are a whole set of technologies which have been spawned by the cloud. For many years, clouds were dominant in the Gartner Emerging Technology um, plots. But now clouds have become trivially, obviously successful. They're dominant, and so they don't appear in them as an emerging technology. They're an emerged technology. And we have little things that some of the things built on clouds, like blockchain, which are or AI platform as a service, which are where we see the cloud appearing. All right, the hype curve 2018, which just came out. It has some of the very uh, conventional ones like brain computer interfaces, um, basically uh, self driving robots. The one I've liked for a long time, artificial general intelligence, which just says the, monster, the computer monster that rules them all. Um, we have various forms of driving. Uh, level five means it is able, cars are able to drive anywhere. And level four means they're able to drive when the conditions are good. We have augmented reality, which is um, actually has a lot of uh, commercial emphasis, but I'm not quite certain how important that is. Uh, we'll have to see, people think it will be. Uh, blockchain is very well regarded technology for distributed ledgers. Virtual assistants, uh, Alexa, et cetera. Um, Cortana, Google Assistant, Siri. Uh, the area that we sort of do in, the, in the, the university, deep neural nets, which uh, you'll learn about in other classes. This is a key technology for machine learning in a very automatic fashion, especially for classification. We also do a lot of work on high performance computing, which is relevant for the digital twin, which is basically building a digital simulation of um, to, to, to predict what a general system will do. Um, here we have the artificial intelligence platform as a service, which I think will come along pretty quickly. Quantum computing, there's a huge federal effort in quantum computing at the moment. But partly because it is possible, it's not obviously going to succeed, but it's one of the more promising ways of uh, making progress. Edge AI. Um, let's remember, we're do talking about the intelligent cloud controlling the intelligent edge, or at least talking to the intelligent edge. The AI will be partly on the cloud and partly on the edge. Um, knowledge graphs, there's a lot of work, semantic web and things like that there. Neuromorphic hardware is just a particular form of hardware to do uh, learning networks. So you see, these are actually reasonably specialized technology. I say previous years, you'll have these much broader technologies, like data science appeared for a little while. Big data, clouds, etc. Okay. All right, so this goes through um, the Technology just have been added, and as I mentioned, there are actually um, more technologies added this year than in previous years. So we have what I've mentioned already, the platform as a service for AI artificial intelligence, which is the programming environment and the which allows you to put AI up on the cloud or actually even on the edge. And um, so all the major cloud vendors are working there. The Society of Automobile Engineers is defined these different levels. Level four is self-driving vehicles, which can um, 
drive except when it's a torrential rain or snow or some something which really is very difficult to do. When at least they should um, stop if they can't drive. Full automation <coughs> is level five, and that's um, somewhat uh, not as far along the curve if you remember from the previous curves. And mobile robots; these are of course autonomous robots. These are self drive, self steering. Intelligent robots running around, hopefully doing a little more than vacuum vacuum cleaning the house. Um, biochips, pretty interesting area. People will work on that general area in the, in the school. Um, we have bioprinting and artificial tissues. Again, virtual tissues are a big effort within the intelligent systems engineering department. I've mentioned blockchain, we'll discuss that very briefly. Blockchain is a technology to that support um, effectively databases or ledgers in a secure fashion, which is automatically distributed. So you can have collaborative, distributed, secure, um, privacy-preserving technology. Um, nanotubes are an important hardware technology. Uh, quantum computing is the other major hardware area. Conversational AI platform. Um, this is, as I say, you speak to your Google Assistant or Alexa, and it will um, it will tell you what to do. All right, now we have Deep Neural Net ASICs, which is uh, application specific integrated circuits. Um, neural nets, are, although they're hugely time consuming, they're a very straightforward uh, architecture, which can be pretty well defined. And so it makes sense to build specialized hard for them, and there's a lot of effort around that. These are using GPUs, FPGAs, or even more customized ASIC or neuro neuromorphic hardware, which is even more like the uh, architecture of the brain. Edge AI is just emphasizing that uh, with Alexa and so on, we have a lot of artificial intelligence basically controlled at the edge. Robots do that, cars do that, Alexa does that. So. The AI is actually split between the edge and the cloud, and you need to know how much of the AI to put on the edge, where you have, you can get the results quicker, but you don't have as much computing power. So there's a trade-off between uh, quickness of results and the quality of the results. Exoskeletons is a um, way we augment humans with uh, biohacking. Um, here's something which is basically self-driving aircraft, and um, I guess they consider that as just taking off their prototypes, obviously. And um, so in some sense, looks a little easier, it seems to me, than self-driving cars. But I, I may be wrong. I would have thought this. it's easier to actually automate what happens in, air, in aircraft, because aircraft are automatic anyway. Uh, knowledge graphs are a well-known area that's been studied for some time. The semantic web, Spark or query language, and so on. And then we need to mix the real world with the virtual world in a in a fashion which is people have tried to make money from that. I actually worked on virtual reality in 1998 and 99, and we failed because the as did the whole industry, actually. There was a huge effort in that time. And it failed because the internet was not powerful enough. Nowadays, the internet is powerful enough. We can link the cloud, and we can get do things that were not possible in those days. And then we're going to um, do the self-healing system technology. Uh, this is... Um, this is pretty, this is again, this is... The slightly alarming technology that systems will be monitoring themselves and deciding themselves how to correct mistakes, download new software, uh, uh, correct an error, and so on. This is a little worrisome because this is the again the um, the supercomputer, global supercomputer, is globally using its own AI to decide how to become better and healthier, and so on. Here's a nice hardware technology for new batteries. And of course, uh, there's lots of people interested in the technology of fabrics. Again, we have work on that in the uh, 
uh, Intelligent Systems Engineering Department. And this is actually smart fabrics, of course, exploiting the fact that sensors can be made very small these days. Now, some of them are leaving. Not so many as actually have been nagging. Notice uh, we must have more, because seems few have left. Uh, here, the simplest ones, the ones that just matured. Uh, drones, user interfaces, machine learning as a global concept. Machine learning is still in there as HAI, but uh, you know these global concepts come along, and um, then they just get well understood. Serverless platform as a service, well that only exists. This is a pretty important technology of cloud computing. It's a way of providing infrastructures in a seamless fashion. I'm surprised it's uh, viewed as matured because it's still not broadly adopted yet. Uh, automating security. Is um, I don't know that that's such a clearly. I mean, whereas the ones above are all very clear efforts, this one is not so clear what it really was. So maybe it's left because they decided it didn't really exist. Uh, here, are other ones that above here left for a reason. Autonomous vehicles just became more specialized, level four and level five. Cognitive computing is a big IBM thing, and that's not obviously successful. Because uh, it's basically replaced by the much more general concept of the global AI supercomputer. Um, cognitive expert advice have just been sort of renamed virtual assistants. That's Alexa, Cortana, Siri. Uh, deep reinforcement learning was up there last year, but it's really shown to be too specialized and just one of many approaches to learning networks. Uh, edge computing, well, edge computing is still critical. And I, I guess I would have kept it on there, except again, they made it more specialized. They've said the key to edge computing is some edge things like robots and cars and flying vehicles, and edge AI is the basic technology. Enterprise taxonomy and ontology management was never that exciting. Sort of a way of using um, vocabularies and, and uh, Proper ways of defining systems to manage things better. And uh, instead of augmented humans, we have particular ways of augmented, augmenting humans with exoskeletons. Okay. All right, so if you looked at um, 2017, uh, there are some. Um, Quite interesting changes. This is again not specializing to clouds, just the entirely emerging technologies. Uh, we have some advancing technologies, drones. They've got really, you can see that in the press and I mean web announcements. Drones are getting gone completely commercial. Companies like uh, uh, GoPro have introduced them and abandoned them because they can't compete with the uh, the the, the Leading companies. Uh, blockchain is getting more and more solid. That's actually more solid than Bitcoin. As blockchain was introduced sort of to support Bitcoin or rather vice versa. But blockchain is solid distributed database technology. Uh, software defined security, which is really configuration defined security. And brain computer interface, these are technologies I'm not quite, they're not so relevant for this particular class. Um, but they're advancing. But sort of over here are even more interesting. Things that have come onto the hype cycle which were not there in 2016. 5G, you, you actually see quite a few announcements about that these days. Artificial general intelligence, that I think is pretty interesting. That we can actually build a real brain which can do sort of anything. Um, we're not quite there yet, but it's a little alarming, but maybe we will be. We know deep learning. Deep reinforcement learning, uh, these key technologies which have really burst onto the scene and now in the hype cycle. Digital twin, building simulations that um, mimic uh, a particular artifact. Edge computing, well, that's the Internet of Things and platform to support the Internet of Things. Serverless platform as a service. So I've stressed that's very relevant to this class. It will be Still a research issue as far as we're concerned, but uh, it will get, it will, <coughs> it will come into this class more and more. Cognitive computing, that's like Watson from IBM. 
Uh, that's again AI applied to, to real life problems. So these are good things, good technologies. And here they're all shown on the on the actual um, uh, graph, and we have a lot of technologies here, like some. Uh, here's blockchain, cognitive computing, both of them there. Deep learning, machine learning. Here's connected home. That's the Internet of Things. Um, IoT platform, that's the software to support IoT. GE has Predex. We had the IoT Cloud. It's a pretty mature technology. Um, here we have edge computing, which is very relevant to clouds because edge computing is supported by clouds. Uh, so here is um, the software defined security, which they, we discussed earlier. And they're here on the slope of enlightenment, but getting to virtual reality is starting to, to get uh, pretty mature. And back here we have neuromorphic hardware. Um, some, and um, <coughs> smart dust. And here we have the artificial general intelligence. So this should be compared with <coughs> um, 2016. So what do we have? So we have software-defined anything and software-defined security. They've now whipped through into this area here. Machine learning is actually around the same point as it was. So that tells you things can sometimes move and sometimes get stuck. Um, blockchain is here, remember it moved over. Um, IoT platform is not so far from where it was in 2017. Here's drones, which are Clearly got more, more more mature in 2017. And back here we have general purpose machine intelligence and smart dust. Uh, these are all are still right near the beginning, as is neuromorphic computing and things like that. Quantum computing. These are very long. They, somebody's quantum computing is pretty long term. Uh, there's lots of re, uh, development has to be done there. All right, here we come to priority matrix, which takes the uh, same items that were on the hype curve and plots them in a sort of benefit, time to reap benefit uh, chart. And so you have the time to reap benefit, two years, two to five, five to ten, and then infinity. More than ten years in the current world is not really realistic. And this is for 2018. And um, actually, compared to some of the years, we don't have as many clear target things to highlight because, as I say, they've now been broken up into so many small items. Uh, they're not these deep concepts. Although I say cloud, AI, uh, underlie every and underlie everything, and big data underlie everything. We have deep neural nets, and uh, which are transformational, which is of course the highest benefit. That's really the, the most important, and they have a pretty near-term uh, realization. No, there's nothing actually less than two years. Blockchain, which is a critical um, the way of getting secure distributed ledgers. Edge AI, the AI platform as a service, which they somehow rate less important than, than, than the actual AI itself on the edge, and then some specialized deep learning things here. ASIC specialized chips to support deep learning. There's a lot of work in that area, and I, I actually I would tend to agree. That I don't think that's as, as important because it's relatively straightforward. And always the deeper in the near future, you will get more, probably more important results from um, actually conventional software on relatively general purpose systems rather than the specialized hardware, because if you're talking about specialized hardware, you have to build in the algorithms. So that's uh, 2018, we now go on to the earlier years. Here we have this priority matrix, which um, plots benefit from low. They're not likely to be many in low, because they wouldn't even bother to mention them if they were low, to transformational. Low, moderate, high transformational. And time from two to 
years to more than ten years. So there's nothing for two years. Two to five, that's quite a lot. Deep learning is meant to be uh, mainstream adoption. That's the, uh, uh, the slope of enlightenment or productivity plateau. Edge computing, IoT platform, machine learning. Those are all relevant to us, and they're all in the two to five years before they're mainstream. Five to ten years, they think blockchain, cognitive computing, deep reinforcement learning, uh, digital twins, again, to, these are all, remember, transformational. These are gonna make incredible impact. Um, here we have drones, uh, not meant to be quite so transformational, although they're pretty transformational. And quantum, I don't know why quantum computing is in transformation. If it actually worked, it would be incredibly transformational. I doubt if it will work. Well, it may work, who knows. Uh, it will take a long time to work well. All right. So that's sort of interesting to just look at it this way here, the brain-computer interface. Um, we sort of do some research, and Martin Sweeney does in that area. He's up here with autonomous vehicles, self-driving vehicles. Here's 2016. Machine learning is two to five, only one in two to five at that time. Um, blockchain is still in the same place and so on. IoT platform, I think, has now moved down to here. Um, so things move around in these, uh, in these um, standard plots. They sort of interest, they all, they've kept the same format. Hype cycle and priority matrix for a long time. And they, that's sort of good, the fact they kept it unchanged. It makes it easier to compare things. Uh, here is uh, <coughs> something irrelevant for clouds, data center infrastructure, which is sort of what a cloud is. And um, here you have um, management tools, the computational fluid dynamics analysis of the data center to see why it works, uh, high density racks. Uh, and so on. Edge computing is sitting here as uh, coming along and impacting the data center because the, the data is uh, coming from the edge. And the, most of the other things here are security and infrastructure, cooling, um, uh, energy harvesting, and so on. Tools to model a data center. That sort of goes in with the CFD analysis. So this is not so important, but it shows the types of technologies. Remember, a cloud is just, in inverted commas, a very, very, very well done data center. So this is relevant to clouds. Uh, you hear right at the bottom here, I see edge data center orchestration. How we get the edge to link to the data center. Um, and here is this. Um, Benefit to mainstream adoption here, this is sort of relevant to the fog, which are the small computer centers that manage the edge. Micro data centers, that you can get the advantage of a big data center in a small footprint. Um, otherwise, these are the same things as before, as on the hype cycle, but uh, classified as the terms of benefit and time to, to make progress.